What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode 57, that's 5-7, of the K-1 Agenda. Everything K-1 Agenda, I'm up to episode 57 now. I mean, think about it. That's 57 weeks in a row I've been on a roll, I've been doing it. But once again, everybody, thank you. Welcome to the K-1 Agenda show, and thank you so much for supporting my channel on YouTube uh, and on Facebook and Instagram. Um, it's it's been um, a real busy year with the pandemic and all the stuff that I've been doing, but I have to say it once again. Thank you guys so much for supporting me. I get so much support from all over the world, and um, I look forward to doing this now. It was kind of getting kind of hard there for a while, I have to be honest, but I look forward to doing it and writing my little script down so I can now have a few things to talk about. But first up, let's get to Optic Studios news. Optic Studios and just, you know, general talk. But really, on my on a personal level, right now, I'm still doing, um, you know, a lot of home projects. Um, just finished uh, doing some fertilization in the grass to get the grass greener and get the weeds and stuff out. And um, that's been um, a project because I'm learning more about, you know, how to keep the grass up and everything and keep the, uh, you know, the, um, the bushes, foliage, foliage and all that other stuff and keeping it together. Um, I did go this past weekend for Memorial Day. Uh, my wife talked me into it. I was I was just being lazy, man. Like didn't want to go to uh, see some uh, great family, uh, some great family members, man. And um, let me tell you, we had a ball. I went to Kentucky. It was Kentucky was beautiful, and I'm so glad that I went because I really needed a break. And it was just a quick kind of a two day trip, man. But I enjoyed it. I really I really did. Uh, Kentucky was a beautiful place. Um, um, Kelly and, and Jody, man, really, uh, gracious host. Thank you so much. I really had a great time. Thank you so much. Um, I wanted to speak on something. This is uh, a little bit, uh, for Optic Studios news and just off the cuff. I wanted to speak on something for, or anybody that's doing not just techno music or electronic music, any kind of music. I would tell anybody, and I just saw, uh, my friend, uh, Larry McCormick, who's out of, uh, Florida, Miami, uh, Florida. He does electro. He posted something that made a lot of sense. He says, "Press your own music." Man, I couldn't I couldn't agree 100% more. Please everybody, press and release your own music. You get all the profits. I I wish I would have known that. I mean, when I first started off, I did that. I pre when I had started my own label, Puzzle Box, you know, I pressed and everything. But over the years, I got P&D deals, publishing and distribution deals and you know, it just had all kind of music out there. And then it got to a point where, man, it's hard to keep up with this. Where's your money coming from and how many copies did they sell? All of this stuff. But I would just say to any artist, you know, if you really believe in this, press your own music. But first of all, own your own material. Complete ownership. That's something that you should have. I'm very proud that I had that. And also uh, the other people that I work with, I pushed that issue. But um, that's a great thing. And I would just say that it's just a little piece of advice. Press your own records. Uh, press your own records and put out your own music. That means manufacturing and putting your money into it yourself. You, you'll, you'll appreciate it because you, you reap all the rewards. Um, also, I, I, like I said, I want to keep everybody up on you know, what's coming up. I, I don't plan on doing any uh, live shows until 2022. And right now that will be um, me DJing as uh, DJ K1. Um, also... Um, Optic Nerve live shows, Alien FM live show, shows, and maybe some, and not maybe, but I will be doing some electro shows under the moniker of K1. 
2022. I'm not going out until 2022. So thank you all. Look forward to that. There'll be more information on that. And remember, PBX33, man, I'm just waiting on Archer to send me emails uh, so, uh, so he'll have the uh, presses and um, I can, uh, me and Ivan can go pick those up. PBX33, which is uh, Strand Meets Optic Nerve. Um, I would show you the white label, but uh, Black Tony came over before I went to Kentucky and I gave him my last white label and I gave Brian Bonds the uh Brian Bonds some white labels and I gave Jeremiah Shaw some uh white labels. But uh, I always give Tony some because Tony's an archiver, man. Tony keep everything. He has everything. So um just get ready for that. Um also I want to speak on just know <laughs> it was sold out, but we do have some more uh pressings in. PBX thirty two, stargazing. Myself, K1, and I'm so proud to announce Gerald Donald from uh, Doppler Fed. This release has been doing really well. And, you know, I would like to think, oh, it's all about K1. No, 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 no. It's Doppler Fed, man, and, and we compliment each other, man. I love his music, man. Uh, he likes a lot of my stuff, and, you know, I'm glad that we did this together, man. And it's been really cool, and um, it's exposed me to other people who may not have known who I was. Um, because they're real big fans of Doppler Effect, or vice versa. Who knows? But uh, I'm glad we did it. Great release, man. It's doing well. We repressed it uh, as well. Um, upcoming news is I've been telling people this month you can get, it will be coming out, the K1 remix of Binary System. And it's a remix I did for the group Microthal on the Trust label out of Vienna, Austria. Um, I'm big fans of theirs, man. Their music, they make funky 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 great electronic music i mean they really good and i'm not just saying that they really are good and um talk about a studio man their studio was amazing i've been there once and it was really nice i actually went there with our uh, tommy from aux88 and we had a ball man those guys are great um also i'm hoping to get some more news on when the release date coming i'm going to be doing a i did a remix for um the exotics and the remix is called ike and that should be coming uh, later this year. I just got to get a release date. Puzzle Box Records News. Well, I mean, hey, we, we're in Optic Studios. And um, I will say for Puzzle Box Records right now, I mean... There's uh, plenty of stuff going on, plenty of releases are going to be coming. I'm waiting on Archer to press some records, but um, I'll put you up on the news of what I personally um, have out right now. Um, the Robotics EP with me, um, Anthony Rother, and DJ Digital was just released last Friday on vinyl. So you can pick that up. It's available on vinyl and um, it also you can get it with a t-shirt and poster and everything. So Please pick that up, and um, you can also go to Mechatronica Bandcamp and pick it up if you want to buy it digitally. Um, I'm waiting to get a, a release date on my um, collaboration with Slam, um, and the track is called Machine Conflict. Great track. It was fun because their music is a little bit different than mine, and it was great to merge the two together, man. And and, and I have so much respect for those guys because they didn't tell me what to do. They were just like, hey, man, just do you, man. You know, sent it to me and told me to, you know, do whatever I want to do. And I appreciate that. And um, that, that shows a, a sign of mutual respect for each other's music. So that was really fun. And I really appreciated that. I have to, I've got to say it here on video. i got to get with DJ Godfather. Oh, you a call back, man. I've been really busy. Not so much busy. Well, I have been busy with out, doing work outside and everything. And then I'm um, just shutting down the studio because everything is completed and done for the next two years, man. So probably another three months I'm going to work on music so I can, um, you know, just take my time and, um, you know, come up and create some different stuff and, and make my sound even better. But pick up our release that we did together called Electro Ghetto Tech. And it's on his label. Database Records, and it was a release with me and DJ Godfather. It's distributed by Clone. So pick that up. I will be calling you, Brian. I haven't forgot about you, man. I've just been enjoying life and keeping busy, man. Um, also, pick up my Optic Nerve EP that came out this year 
Far Away on Soma Records with the artwork from Kyle Irvin. Kyle is the bomb. Check out Kyle's um, two-page digital artwork for the uh, that tells the optic nerve story. Um, but pick up the Far Away EP on Soma. Also, my original Uncharted LP by Optic Nerve, which is my um, my other um, alias that I go by for my techno music, uh, released on Axis Records, the uh, Skate Velocity series, which is, once again, the album is called Uncharted. And it's a doozy. It's, a, it's an amazing sci-fi album with a story. So check that out. Go to Axis. It's available for digital download. So just go to Jeff Mills Axis Records, look up Optic Nerve Uncharted LP and pick that album up. And I would appreciate that. Um... Once again, guys, we got, you know, the upcoming release of uh, Puzzle Box uh, Records, PBX 33, which is Optic Nerve Me Strand, which I, I mentioned uh, earlier. And Repressed in Stock, PBX 29, Modular World. That's my K1 Electro. Um, also, PBX 30, Monochromatic Images by Alien FM. PBX 31, The Mad Scientist, which is me and Tommy Hamilton when I was formerly in AUX88. Um, last but not least, I want to put you up on the merchandise 35% off sale for the month of June. Uh, keep this, keep a note, make note of this. It will be 35% off on everything in the store June 10th, June 11th, June 12th, June 23rd, 24th, 25th, 26th, and 27th. Remember, June 10th, 11th, 12th, 23rd, 24th, 25th, 26th, and 27th. Everybody, listen. 35% off at least two to three times a month on all this product. Like I said, t-shirts, mugs, coffee mugs, cups, pillows, tapestry, hoodies, baseball shirts, short sleeve shirts, um, phone cases. Man, you can get so much and it has all the designs for all the logos that I've done over all these years and I have more coming. And keep in mind, you can get this shipped pretty much from your own country. So you're going to save on shipping. Pick the stuff up now. Go get it. K1 out. Question of the week. Uh, question of the week was... And before I say that, let me uh, remind everybody, if you have any question related to anything I'm doing, what I've done in the past, whatever, I don't have a problem, I answer any questions, please email puzzlebox at puzzleboxrecords.com. The question of the week was, will Uncharted, which is Uncharted, eventually be released on vinyl? Once the Axis Publishing contract runs out or sooner, it's a very good album. Well, first off, thank you very much for um, the compliment on the album. Um, and that was the LP that I talked about earlier in, in some of the Puzzle Box news. That's my uh, Optic Nerve Uncharted LP. Um, it was really cool that, you know, Jeff got in touch with me, Jeff Mills got in touch with me to do this you know, for some future endeavors that could happen for me. And I was more than happy to, to take the challenge because it made me even pause for a while and figure out what I had to do because I have to impress Jeff Mills and Jeff Mills is the man. So, I mean, the contract that came to me was one of the best contracts I ever signed. It was just kind of open, like, you know, you can do what you want to do and, you know, and it reverts, rights revert back to you and everything. So I'm looking into that, but I would, I would probably check with Jeff first personally just to see if, um, you know, if I can do it or when I can do it. But the contract was really open where you can just, you know, 
break off the contract at any any given time or whatever. But um, I, I, I'm looking into that because I know uh, there was a lot of uh, stores that hit me up personally and asked me, was it going to be an a, a, a actual vinyl release? But I'm sure sooner or later it will be, even if I have to do it myself. But thanks for that question. And once again, thank you for the support and giving me the compliment on the album. And once again, everybody, if you have any questions, please email puzzlebox at puzzleboxrecords.com. Thank you. Old pick or video. Um, this one once again. Hey everybody, this is a portrait of an electronic band documentary that we did seven years ago. That was a ten-hour um, um, Blu-ray uh, video of the AUX88 documentary and how we came about and all the hard work we put in, so that we could tell our story. Cause you know it may not ever be told the right way or told by somebody else. But I this week I want to um, feature from that video is the formation of puzzle box records this is um you know just telling you the insights of how i you know and just information on how i decided to you know create my own label and branch off and leave aux 88 the first time in uh 95 um i had already created a lot of music on direct beat um i already had my alias alien fm I already had k1 I already had optic nerve and i was also doing stuff with aux 88 so Check this out, and um, once again, I'm very proud of this because, you know, if no one else tells your story, man, you can get it. It's it's a collector's type thing. Anybody who has it, you're lucky to have it because it won't ever be made again. Um, thank you. Check it out. The tumultuous nature of Aux 88 historically results in one or two things. The creation of something epic or separation and new beginnings. This would prove to be true in more ways than one for Keith Tucker. Now a solo artist, Keith ventured into the unknown. Puzzle Box Records would eventually surface and live now into its 20th year. But the road would prove to be challenging. I met Keith Tucker in the end of 96, and we became really good friends and so forth. And I saw that he needed some help with his record label. Um, he was doing everything by himself. He was doing the pressing, he was doing the paperwork, he was doing just everything. And his studio at the time, at that time, was in Southfield, Michigan. And so it's a 12 mile between Evergreen somewhere. My role was to, to, to um, manage, to do bookings, um, help with the record pressing, um, also mastering. And also I played with him too, I, I'm, a, I'm a techie. So it was kind of, you know, a very good match that I was able to, you know, bring the computer into and the laptop of the PC world because most people that do techno music was actually working with Macs at the time. And I was like, you know, PCs are much cheaper, you know, let's try this. And so I, I used to build computers also for some of the people like Eddie Folks and built computers for them and, and um, did some service work on their computers and, and some other um, uh, R&B artists that were trying to start up too that we knew. Um, I was, you know, doing our side business because not only did we run Puzzle Box, but we also did some other stuff with the electronics with the computer business as well. So we had a couple of things in the fire, you know, going on, but my, my involvement was just basically just managing the business, managing um, his career. What type of person Keith Tucker is? I would say that he was a, a go-getter. I would say that he was somebody that was pushing, pushing, pushing to, to get to a goal. I would say that he was somebody that wanted everybody to come along, but that didn't always happen. I would say that um, he, would, he would sometimes be a little overbearing with it because he knew what he wanted, but everybody else wasn't on the same page sometimes. So he came across as being a capital, you know. So, but he was that type of person. He is a slave driver in a sense with the people that he worked with because he's a perfectionist and wants things to, to, to be done a certain way. But at the same time, you know, he's trying to help people become better as he, as he becomes better. Everything we did was in the evening, you know, and at one point Keith was working for um, General Motors out in, in, um, in Warren at the time. Um, so he would go to work, I would go to work, we meet up at the studio later on. And so we would work at the studio for about eight hours at night, 
you know, filling orders, um, coming up with graphics. He'd be doing music. We'd be coming up with vocals. You know, there's a couple of songs that my voice is on um, to do some, some work for him and everything. So, you know, that was a typical day. And just, you know, we were just driving, trying to, you know, build a record label up and build up a brand. And I think we did build a brand up. You know, we even came up together with a cube with the puzzles on it. You know, and we made it move and transform since I was in, in the computer world. You know, I knew how to do some of those things in the graphics and stuff. And then Keith was working with computers as well. So, you know, by us having that knowledge, we were able to do a lot with our graphics. So a typical day would just, you know, would be about an eight, another eight hour shift after we get off our eight hour shift at our regular job. Started out 30 years ago with Keith Tucker as a DJ a hip-hop DJ in the streets. Him, myself, Pete, alias DJ Smurf Jam. And we started DJing in the street because we all had a love for doing it. Um, at that time, hip-hop was exploding real big here. We were scratching and cutting and rapping and stuff like that. We had a little group. We thought we was going to be the next run DMC. It turned out <laughs> we didn't really do too good, but it was still cool. Uh, music industry. I started working with Keith at Puzzle Box in 99 and I was there for three years. Had a great time. Unbeknownst to him, that was always a dream of mine to work for a record label and be on the radio. I accomplished both of those dreams working for Puzzle Box. I was helping Keith and Wanda do work, putting the studio together as far as, you know, the, uh, the actual construction of the studio, the offices, and the studio itself. And then one day, I went to go to work and they broke on me and they said, we want to ask you to be a partner in the record label. And I, I would have cried, but you know, I ain't no, no punk <laughs> <laughs> and, and I And I accepted, and it was, it was a good time. That's My time at Puzzle Box, I, I was in charge of promotions. Um, we did a tour once. I was the road manager. Uh, collections. I did just about anything they asked me to do, I would do. You know, if, whether it was taking records to somebody, going to pick somebody up, it didn't make a difference. I was, I was on because I was glad to be a part of it. What were some of the countries we went to on the tour? Um, we went to Paris, France. We performed at a club called, uh, let me freaking remember, the Rex Club. That, that was it. We had a good time there. We, we literally tore that motherfucker up. Then we left there and went to Copenhagen, Denmark, Copenhagen. And there was no club, it was a warehouse and they turned it into a club. Shit was, I had never seen anything like that in my entire life. We walk in there and they were putting up the props and stuff, the overhead screens and the sound system and they had uh, the DJ set up. They took some, some pipes, welded them together and had rubber bands and made it so that the DJ coffin would float. And I was like, wow, this is gonna be deep. And we came back that night, and it was a hell of a scene. It was like something out of a damn Blade movie. <laughs> Lights flashing and shit. I was like, man, I'm gonna get down those vampires and shit come out of this <laughs> And Keith looked at me and said, dude, you crazy as hell. I was like, you say that now. If a vampire jump out of your ass, you gonna be in trouble. You know what, but it, it wasn't that cold to me. It was real brisk, but the real nice time we had was when we got the bar to fit Lola. Mm -hmm. Spain, and we performed at the Apollo Nitsa. Yep. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And we we had it had like three floors, and they had DJ set up on each end of the the floors, different levels, different different types of DJs, and it, it was just awesome. And on the main stage, Keith DJ, and then a number of names came out and performed. And I was the hype man, all three in all three countries. And we, we just had a blast. We, we, we literally, we left them people. I was like, 
I don't give a fuck who was here last week. You gonna remember us till the next person show up. Cause tonight, this is our house. And that was, that was the attitude we had. Yes, um, the formation of Puzzle Boss Records, which is my label now, that um, I've had it almost, almost what, almost 30 years, man. So I'm really proud of it, um, all the music that's been put out on it, and also, you know, just that I, my ownership of all my music that I've done on other labels, my label, and everything that I'm a part of, uh, other groups and stuff. So thank you very much, and uh, we'll see what I can come up with on the next video uh, for next week. Shout outs. Shout outs this week um, are two special people, man. Um, what they're doing is amazing. I have to give a shout out to Alicia Marie and Terrence Dixon from Minimal Detroit. If no one ever gives you flowers or um, accolades, I want to because I really applaud what you guys are doing with the Minimal Detroit page that they have. Not only do they give exposure and props to, to, um, to me, um, and other artists, they give it to everyone equally, man. Any news you post, they repost, man. They they really believe in, you know, promoting everybody. And that's what's so important. Just like when I spoke on, you know, supporting the music and stuff. A lot of these um, old school cats, man, some of these legends, man, they don't support, man. We've been playing their music forever, man. And they, they go out here and they still play, you know, the, you know, other artists or whatever, but that's, 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 that's a whole nother story, but I want to give them their flowers and give them love. Alicia Marie and Terrence Dixon from Minimal Detroit. Thank you guys so much for helping me and promoting my stuff on your page. I really appreciate it. Love you guys. Thank you so much. And I want to say, as I always do, I know what I've done, what I've what I'm going to do and what I will be doing. Know that, that I keep my word and I do what I say I'm going to do. Everybody have a great weekend. Thank you so much for all that you do and all the support that you give me. Always, I think I'm going to do this every week. Special shout outs to two people. Moms and dad, love you. Looking and planning to see you soon. Everybody take care. See you on the next K1 Agenda, which will be episode 50. And I just want to say, everyone, please hit that subscribe button for YouTube. And please subscribe to my page. Um, I really have enjoyed all the support I've been getting, bro. Hey, like this and subscribe to this page. Keep touching K1. Hit the subscribe button.